Hello and welcome to episode 37 of the Let's Run Facebook Ads, the podcast with myself, Nick Boddington and James Urquhart. Today, we're going to be discussing, and I drum roll, the seven day stack. I was actually on a call yesterday, consultancy call. He said, are you going to be doing, going to do a podcast on the seven day stack? Because you've talked about it a lot, but don't actually tell anyone how to do it. So I thought, what better to do than a seven day stack broadcast? I hope you enjoy. Morning, James. Nick, how are we? Welcome to the uh, Let's Run Facebook Ads, the podcast. Again, everyone and James. Well, we we did it last week, Olivia and I, so you weren't even involved last week. So, welcome, no, in Nick. Thir- no, in 36 is us at a uh, marketing showcase event, which we are doing in, in 30 minutes' time again, another Q&A. So, um, listen up. That will be probably next week's podcast. There will be some juicy little things. But so, um, yeah, I've discussed, we've discussed, Matt and I discussed, seven day stacks have always been discussed as a great thing, great way of retargeting a thing, a great way of ret- retargeting on Facebook, but never explained how it, how it works. So I thought we'd take this episode to explain how it works. Now, before I go into the how it works, do you want to, have you got any views on it, James? A seven day stack? Yeah. On my first view is it freaking works for everybody that does that pretty much, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a great way um, of taking social social stuff, which is obviously massive, opposed to just web, website visitors. Yeah, I see the seven day stack as 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 something that sort of sits between organic and paid. It sort of yeah. marries the two up, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Never really seen it like that, but now you said it, it is that. It's the meeting of two minds. Well, because it, logic says that if someone comes to your website, you're going to retarget them. That's like marketing, retargeting 101. If someone comes to your website, you get retargeted with an ad, yeah? But from a Facebook and Instagram point of view, it's not something that many people do. Like people go on to, you know, you go onto your Instagram, you see stuff, you click on a page, you engage with it in any way whatsoever. And you automatically, you just, that's it. You, you post more organic posts to hopefully capture these people. But by doing this, it's not as if it's like, yes, it's always been around. You could always retarget people on your Instagram page and Facebook page and stuff like that. But this just brings it all nicely together. And I think this work where the seven day stack works really well is people that haven't got huge amounts of budget. You need enough budget that there's stuff going on, but not huge amounts of budget. Because I think when you get into the huge amounts of budget area, you then are retargeting just website, just Instagram, just Facebook and stuff like that, because you can break it down. You can sort of funnel it out better, but to try and get as many people retargeting as possible with a low budget, it's absolutely perfect. It's going to work better though, if you're doing a number of things, posting regularly on Instagram. Well, no, before you go to that, what, why don't you go into actually what the seven day stack is? And how you'd set that up via ads manager, and then, <clears throat> and then we'll go into actually each stage and what okay. we can do that side. Well, there's two, so there's two ways you can do this, and again, this goes on budget, and you can really there, there's no precise way of doing it. So we obviously talk about top, middle, and bottom of funnel. Now, seven day stack is essentially going to be I, I like in ecom world. I like to say top of funnel is going out to a lookalike or interest based audiences or both. They come into your website and they start looking around your products. Middle of funnel is a seven day stack, which means that you're going to retarget anyone who's come to your website, anyone who's vid- watched a video, anyone who's been on Instagram or anyone who's been on Facebook. And you're retargeting them with ads that you like. You could use a catalog ad, you could use an image ad, you could use another video. Either way, you're just basically nurturing them a bit further, but you're using a purchase conversion. You're not using traffic or video views. You're always using a purchase conversion. And then the bottom of funnel is like your DPA ad. Now, really, you need, from an econ point of view, though that's like a little perfect little hack, having those three stages, you do need some half-decent budget, like 30 quid a day, 40 quid a day, really, because you've got to be bringing stuff into the top to make the middle and bottom work. And that's what I find most about people I speak to is they don't have enough, but they want to do all three stages, but they don't have enough money to do all three stages. So if you don't have enough money to do all three stages, what you could do is you could build it both into your top of funnel. So if you build a campaign at the top and you call it 
it's a purchase conversion campaign because as you know we don't like to run traffic anymore so a purchase conversion campaign using the objective conversions have it for purchase and this is econ by the way but even lead gen you would do a, 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 a conversion objective you just choose lead opposed to purchase bring traffic in cold from a lookalike or interest base or whatever and that's your your top of funnel ad in the ad set and then you have another ad set ad within the same campaign using a CBO budget. So you've got 30 quid a day as a campaign. And then in your ad set level, you've got a cold ad going out to interests and lookalikes. And then you've got another one, which is a middle of funnel, which is your seven day stack. And your seven day stack is basically what you need to do is you need to go into your audiences and you need to create anyone who's engaged with Facebook on the, and change the retention to seven days. I think the retention starts at 385 days or something. Change it to seven days and call it anyone who, call it Instagram, seven days. Build another audience, go on to Facebook, seven days retention and call it Facebook, seven days. Do the same with video views, unless you're not running any video and do the same with website visitors, seven days. What you do then is you're in your little seven day stack um ad set is that you go in and when you see the audiences you build in your custom audiences which are the ones that you've labeled seven days they all run together at the same time so what facebook will do in this scenario is you've got one campaign but you've got a top of funnel let's say it's 30 quid a day you've got top of funnel going to look likes and interests and then you've got your middle of funnel seven day stack facebook will probably favor your top of funnel because it's got more people to go to new traffic coming into the website but as soon as it starts seeing anyone that it got on the seven day stack goes oh i could retarget joe blogs because he came in and looked at the website he will and facebook will and the same anyone who's gone onto instagram and the thing that's really good about it with instagram and facebook is that they can like comment and share they can any interaction whatsoever with an, an instagram post or a facebook post suddenly falls into those audiences for retargeting and I think it's one way that I think why it works is that smaller businesses, no one's doing enough on Facebook and no one's doing enough on Instagram and they're probably not driving enough traffic to the website. So having retargeting to each individual audience is just really, really hard and you'll just never get a feed out from Facebook. Put all three of those together suddenly gives you an audience to go at. Um, now, if anyone who's sitting here thinking, oh, I don't do anything on Instagram or Facebook, then you haven't really got a seven day stack because you've just, you've just got website visitors to go to. So it is, you kind of only can really use this if there's a, if there's something going on, on all three of those areas. Does that make sense? It does. And like I said, you know, when you said um, earlier about, you know, how, how, why do I think it works and how do I see it? And I said about the, the sort of meeting of paid and organic, there's a lot of smaller businesses, especially localized businesses, you know, they, <clears throat> they're very big on, on organic, aren't they? And obviously we know, yeah. you know, we know the way that the, the algorithms changed over the last what, three, four, five years and why now organic isn't as, as, uh, as profitable as it once was, because it wasn't pushing out organically. Cause obviously we want people, you know, advertisers like us and, you know, people will listen to this podcast and running paid ads. But actually, it's the companies that are still doing those organic postings, you know, daily, whether it's a small coffee shop or, or an eatery. I think it's a nice way to learn how to use paid internally without going crazy and actually being quite daunting. Because as we know, when you first go into sort of ads manager and you go into interests and all the rest of it, there's a lot of data there, isn't there? There's huge volumes yeah. you can select on. Whereas if you're only selecting on people that have engaged with my brand or my business in the last seven days or 14 days or however long you do it, do it for, I think you can go up to 30 days, can't you? Off the top of my head. For, for what? A seven day stack. I think you can do like a 14 day stack. You can do whatever you like because it just comes down to your retention. So there's a little box in each audience when you create it saying, how, essentially, how far back do you want to go for Facebook to pull data? And I think it starts off on 385 days. So you what can go that? about that. So, yeah, yeah. So if you wanted to build, uh, you know, if, if I was building a standard website visitor audience, I'd just build it on like 180 days or 300 days. It doesn't really matter because you're going to get anyone who goes onto your website. 
So what we're doing yes. here is we're bringing it back down to seven days. Interesting enough, you could you could do a ten days. You could do a, you could do a fourteen. I think you could do a five. I think the, what the, the sweet spot just seems to be like a seven day. Well, it seems to have what worked. So anything that's happened in a seven day period, those people get retargeted. You could try yeah. five. You could try three. You could try one. So it's quite good in the way that you could do different ones. If you've got loads of traffic and loads of budget, there's nothing saying that you can't do a one day. Interesting enough, though, we do it for, for um, I've been trying a lot of that when one day stuff out for a particular client of ours who has got, excuse me, who has got really large budgets. I don't get any, I don't get any leads through on a one day. I hardly get any leads through on a 14 day. It, it's all a seven day or a 30 day. Mm. The other two just never. I thought I thought I'd be basically Christmas would have come early with the one day. It's like oh, if they go on, if they see any of the ads, and now I can retire them on the first day. It's going to really pull them in. But it doesn't. It's seven days. Seven days is the most popular. I guess it goes down to what the product or service is, um, because if it's you know if it's something that you know, you know it's, it's quite a, a high ticket item, you know, is is one day enough to educate that consumer? Mm. about your product or service potentially not um you know seven days you know it seems to work doesn't it across like i said our entire portfolio of clients at the moment it's working for pretty much everyone has done from day yeah. one um but i truly believe do you think it's like psychologically that we see we can't make as a human being with stuff going on in our mind we can't make a decision in that time span in that time definitely definitely you know especially when you've got kids you know you put them bed at certain times and you know, a lot happens whether you've got, you know, football on a Wednesday night and, you know, suddenly you've got such a finite amount of time. In seven oh, days. Wednesday just... night? Do you, didn't you go to watch England play last night? Wembley, I did. I did. Although I don't play football anymore, Nick, as you know, because my ankles are absolutely shot. Um, but yeah, I did. Yeah. But a lot goes on, doesn't it? So I think that seven days is enough time then to, to educate um, the, the, the consumer. But I do, like I said, I truly believe it's, it's a nice way of coming into paid ads mm. because it is daunting, isn't it? You know, like I said then about the, the volume of audiences and, you know, there's a lot going on in Ads Manager. And if you've got that organic presence, you know, I use Coffee Architects um, in Leamington as a good example. Amazing following. They don't actually have a shop anymore, but if they did, you know, that would be a nice way for them to, to try paid knowing that you know we're not going out to a really cold audience let's just test the waters with people that have engaged yeah. the brand yeah well it, it, it's it's actually like perfect for anyone who because a lot of people nowadays especially um you know brands who are trying to push themselves out in fitness or whatever and they do a lot of posting on instagram don't they and you do get a lot of people who are very successful on that but there isn't any it's very hard to monetize organic posting but this is actually quite a good solution. So you could go as simple as going, I'm really good on Instagram. I do loads of it. Like some of the people we follow just from a, a social media point of view, uh, you know, one man bands or whatever, or small agencies. And they're brilliant with pushing themselves out on uh, specializing in video, specializing in Instagram posts, all that sort of stuff. All they would need to do really, if they're using that as their way out, as their essentially their top of funnel is organic Instagram. Mm -hmm. But if they then set up their ads manager and everything and just said, okay, I don't have a website. I just have really, it's just posting, but they could then do an ad to read it, to retarget anyone who engage with their Instagram post to a product or a service that they sell. Yeah. A really simple funnel, a funnel on going from organic straight into paid very, very simply. Yeah. Cause you do, you see some, you know, you see some, some posts come up on Instagram and you're like, oh, that's quite interesting. And then something happens, you know, the kids are screaming or you've got to jump out or, you know, but the usual stuff, life. And there are occasions where I've not saved them and gone, oh, what was that? And it doesn't happen very often, but it does still happen, whether it's just caught my attention for one or two reasons. But if I got served for an ad with an ad within the next seven days about that product, would I remember it? Yes, it would call my attention. But I would have engaged with the brand if I didn't. See what no. I mean? More to the point is, how much do you actually get retargeted nowadays? I don't. Well, actually, I got a little um, thing come up on Instagram saying, do you want to essentially be shown more paid advertising? So I obviously You've got that by yes. Instagram, yeah? Yeah, come up. Yeah, come up. Mm. 
Yeah. Now, for me, I want to see what other people are doing. You know, I want to see how people are trying to interact with me, how they're trying to, you know, what hooks people are using. So for me, it's it's great. Uh, but it, it's been vast, Nick. I have to say, you know, not that I engage with many brands, so not that I like many pictures, um, but the volume of ads that I've been shown since I've clicked that, yes, actually, I'd like to see more sort of, you know, ads more targeted and relevant to me. It's been vast. Yeah, yeah. well, it's interesting you say because I, because obviously I'm, Stuff that I'm doing for my house, like I've got the, the garage inside the house and blinds, all this sort of stuff. So I'm obviously actively every day or every two days just spending 20 minutes looking at certain things I could get for the house. Mm -hmm. I never get retargeted. Do you not? Not by the actual brands and very rarely by anything that coincides or is similar to those brands I've been looking at. Don't have, get you engage, at all. have you engaged with them? Or have you just been on the website and sort of had a little look, 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 look around? to the website and stuff like that. Okay. Don't get loads of it at all. I wonder why that is. No, I see. I see uh, that um, air. You know that breathing apparatus thing for fitness that was a company. Oh my god! Consultancy. Where are you know, we? We had them, and he said, "Oh, we need to speak to them." And I never, I was never able to. We didn't yeah, hear from yeah. them again. They probably listen to this podcast. Hopefully, they probably listen to this. I see them everywhere. I saw them in market. I was in Facebook Marketplace yesterday. I saw them in the fitness section. Yes, it was brilliant. It's giving me ideas uh, about you know actually. I'm 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 thinking about actually doing targeted ads into marketplace. Like marketplace is becoming really really busy. Um, loads of stuff going on. A lot of people mm -hmm. using it now. And you do see ads in it. And I see a lot of my retargeting actually in Marketplace. And I think why it stands out in Marketplace is because you've got, like yesterday, I was in there looking for some a fitness bench from my garage. Um, and all I see is benches, dumbbells, all this sort of stuff, and then an ad, and then an ad. And they and then the ads actually stand out. But the, that, that breathing one was in the fitness section. So it's, I think there's a, a lot of room. I'm going to be just starting to do a lot of research on how you can use Marketplace and actually trying to create a strategy around getting goods you're advertising into the marketplace better yeah, yeah. maybe yeah so that's something to come yeah but yeah for the seven day stack it's you know i think it's like i think it's a really nice way to enter the paid world which is daunting mm -hmm. i think you're not going out to a cold audience so you know a lot of companies that a lot of companies that i speak to have never looked at sort of that cold paid advertising because they don't want to annoy people they don't want to go out yeah. to a cold audience uh, for a number of reasons. Maybe they just just don't want to be seen by the outside world, you know, whatever that may be. Maybe they just don't want to. Maybe they don't want to grow too quickly potentially. You know, there's some of those out there as we know. But I think yeah. actually that seven day stack bridges that gap between. I know I need to do a bit paid. Yeah. But I'm really loving organic because you know I'm giving content to, let's say it's mums as an example. You know, which is a, a, you know, which is a nice market to go into because they're very engaged. You know, they're, they're, they're on maternity leave and, you know, like with my little daughter who's two and a half, if I see something that's for children that age, I engage with it in some way. Maybe I click on the ads, you know, and have a quick look. So I do think it bridges that gap in a nice way opposed to, oh, let's see some paid ads, you know, quickly, you know, let's show you the whole world, you know, what you're doing. And then, and then you're not worried about, you know, purchase conversion and where are they in the funnel and obviously you've got to you know optimize it for what we need it to do um but even if you didn't even if you did do it from just a traffic perspective to start with i think it's a nice way of just entering that paid this paid arena without just going what the hell do i do yeah yeah absolutely um just quickly i just want to say that i talked about when setting up the seven day stack that you can do it in a you know a campaign and then mix your top of funnel with middle of funnel so it works with the same budget you don't have to do that you can just set it up as a, a middle of funnel campaign if you want to so just so that no one gets confused thinking always oh, mixing them into each other i'm actually going to do a video and stick it on the group um okay. because i think that'd be really interesting I'll, I'll just use our account or something and just set up and just show show everyone in 10 15 minutes how to actually set it up from building the audiences and then so I think there'll be a few people thinking, oh, I know I get it, but I actually need to follow the instructions. Um, so I'll do that. So this week I'll, I'll put a post out into the group um, about doing that. Do you can do it from our one, Nick. Um, 
from, yeah. from less than socials ad account. Um, okay. But yeah, the, okay. the seven day stack, I think everyone, everyone should have it in their arsenal. Oh, definitely. Definitely. So, and you can run it for like, just run it on three, three quid, five quid a day, just pick up stuff. Mm. Um, it's really good. Okay. So a couple of questions we've had into the group actually want to get answered because we get quite a lot through. So I thought we could just do a little 10 minute Q and A on, uh, questions that have come through. Yeah. So this one's from, I think it's pronounced Mikai, I think De young apologies if it's not. So what ad objective would be best for serviced based industries that don't have anything to purchase online? Usually the goal is to get a potential customer to call or fill out a form so we can contact them. <laughs> well, you want to start with that one because it's essentially what we do, isn't it? Well, I was going to say, what, what is our ad objective currently for MIB data lead base? Using, go into your set up a new, create a new campaign, conversions, make sure you've got a pixel and everything set up on your website properly or on your, you make sure you need to have your landing pages all pixelated, conversions, and then select lead, create a lead. That would be the best one to do. Um, yeah. um, usually the goal, he says, usually the goal is to get a potential customer or call. Anything that we've learned from what we do um, that we could add to that. So obviously you need to build your ad out. We've used video, we've used imagery um, as creative. We've gone straight into the, the copy would be along the lines of, um, are you, I'm, ca I'm caught, when I do the videos, I'm calling out to the person, are you a freelancer who's got stuck with Facebook advertising, can't well, get we, it um, working the way you want it to? Yeah, I was gonna say, why don't we use MIB lead base as an example? So uh, we've been running, uh our ads now for another um offering we do which is lead base which is essentially trying to get people to use direct marketing and cold data lists correctly so our lads uh our ads have been going live now for four or five days nick give or take so not yeah. loads of money 50 pound a day we we got on saturday seven leads as an example um and we've been optimizing for leads uh, we you know the hook is get a free trial. Now, I think if you're going, you know, depending on what the service is, you need to really, I think, I really, really understand what that hook is and actually what's mm -hmm. working. Because some hooks, yeah. unfortunately, are a bit boring. Even some of the ads I get served uh, served within the service industry are a bit bland. Um, so I'd say make sure your hook, you know, is 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 good enough to get grab people's attention. And and call out to the person. Call out to the person you're trying to get to. So if it's a freelancer, for instance, yeah. say, "Are you a freelancer looking to blah 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 blah?" If so, click here. Read on. Watch this video. Yeah, and I was going to say segment your creative and your copy per segment, and make sure that's correct. Like you said, then Nick, hey freelancer, make sure your video and your creative is is calling out to those people. If it's a business owner, yeah. whether it's a salesperson. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing is make sure your creative is on point and it's calling out to that particular segment and just make sure you've got a good hook. Cause if it's just, I just fancy a chat, I don't, you, you're yeah. not going to grab too many people's attention, are you? Yeah. But again, don't drive traffic. Um, just go straight <laughs> yes. into lead conversions. You might say, oh, I've never, oh, the pixels just gone on, blah, blah. Facebook will still go out and find, we found it with all our lead gen that at first it starts off being quite expensive. So don't go bloody hell it's coming through 180 quid a lead it will as the pixel starts getting better because our pixel was cold as well when we first started doing it as the pixel starts warming up and then it's seeing the people going through and blah blah the, it's not stupid it's a very intelligent computer and your price point will start coming down i think we pay like 30 pounds a lead now yeah for, for let's on social it was when it first started it was 185 and within six weeks, got it down to between sort of thirty and fifty. It was averaging thirty-five, but if you, we, we know, like it was, it was around those those costings. So yeah, like like you said, Nick, don't get overly concerned that it's really expensive from day one because it's just it's going to be. Um, but persist and and reevaluate, and in, in, you know, once there's enough data that that's gone through. Okay. Another question. I don't know who this is from. Got a question. How should a subscription service use Facebook ads differently? I.e., is more retargeting required since it requires more trust to purchase? It's a great question. 
Oh, I so. wouldn't. I, I, well, I, uh, my opinion is uh, you need to look at the data in terms of you know where are those where are those acquisitions coming from and how much retargeting do they need? They might not need any um, retargeting because it's such a good offering. And I know I know we use people like HelloFresh um, on a couple of episodes ago, didn't we, as examples mm. for that subscription model. I think the two the two things you really need to understand as from a subscription business is what's your cost per acquisition and what's your lifetime value. Yeah. Can and if you're losing tell them how to work out a lifetime value, we've got time. We've got seven, eight minutes until we've got to go on to this question, Q and A show. Lifetime value. Or just mm. how much they'll spend that consumer or that customer will spend of the lifetime of them being with you as a customer. So if you think of it as an insurance policy, if you stayed with an insurance for, let's say, five years and it was £100 per year, your lifetime value would be £500. Yeah. Simple as that. Very simple. So I, as a subscription model, I I would go into it with my eyes open going, I'm potentially going to lose money on that first acquisition. I'm actually going to lose money acquiring a customer. But then I know my lifetime value is so much, I'm happy to lose money on that acquisition. And yeah. they're the two things that I really, I would really make sure you understand those numbers before you either scale or or do much else. I'd, I'd really understand those those um, yeah, yeah. those figures before, like you said, you start looking at retargeting us because they're more expensive. So I would, yeah, you retarget I would try and, through email. It might be that email needs to be where you retarget because you're going to have to pay Facebook another retargeting cost. And if you're having to retarget three times, there's a cost coming to each of those retargeting ads, whereas email is hittance. Yeah, so could you give, you know, you know, look at Harry's razors. Amazing, they've done fantastically. Just by posting packaging, you know, five ninety nine and get, you know, £40, I think it's value of, of razors. They know they've got you there. The second you buy those razors, you, you're in. So, yeah, I'd, I'd understand those. And like you said, if you can take away some of those costings via things like email marketing to get people back into your system and repurchasing, and then that'll increase your lifetime value, then perfect. But, yeah, just, just understand those two numbers before you go crazy. Um, yeah, yeah the, that's the biggest one for that. Okay, um, right. Well, we've got five minutes until we've got to go. So let's call it here. Basically, anyone who's got any questions, so we're getting a lot of questions coming through Facebook, through Instagram, and on the group now. We will try our best to answer those questions on these podcasts. There's one more here that I haven't answered yet. I am going to go onto the group and answer that. That's from Dean Witten. So I'll come onto the group and either send you a text or uh, a video message on that. But if you want anything answered on this podcast, we'll try and do that at the end of every podcast every week, finish off with a couple of questions after our topic. I hope you enjoyed that. I, again, I'm going to go on to the group this week. I'm going to set myself a little task to do it. Go on and do a, a video on how to set, set up a seven-day stack um, just to make it nice and simple for you all to watch. So if you haven't already joined the Let's Run Facebook Ads group on Facebook, go there now ask for permission, we'll, one of us will come on and give you permission to the group and you can see everything we've been doing. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you took something away from that um, and good luck with your Facebook ads. Thank you, James. Cheers, mate. See you next week. Cheers. Bye.